for everyone who hasn't, uh, who, who are just joining us now, we're going to be cooking a noodle dish called Wat Dan Ho. In Malaysia, it's called Gui Diao Siram. And uh, my, my particular version, I don't put soy sauce in my noodles, but the one in Malaysia, they do. Okay, so because Craig happens to have some soy sauce lying around in his kitchen pantry, we're going to do that. But you don't have to. But essentially what we're going to do first is just heat up some oil. I'm going to use a wok right over here. Heat up some oil till it's um, uh, at a smoking point and then throw in the noodles and just um, frying it up very quickly and then we're going to uh, set it aside, pour it into a plate and then we'll do the sauce after that. Okay, let's get into it. And it was this one, wasn't it? Okay, not that one. <laughs> okay, here you go. Um, everyone's got their, um, got their pan ready to go? And I might just turn on the exhaust. Um, yeah, just um, okay. the other one. No, no. Okay. And I've got some oil here, and this is the oil I'm using, carotino, palm fruit oil. But um, any vegetable oil will work just fine. I'll put it like about just about half a tablespoon in there. You don't want it too oily. And I'm just going to swivel the oil a little bit around the pan, uh, around the wok. Okay. Um, the carotino oil is really good for most types of cooking. This particular version gives it a yellow hue, but it's just an aesthetic thing, so don't worry too much about it. If it looks a little bit yellow, the taste is just going to be just fine. Okay, I'm just putting in the noodles now. And like I said, because Craig has some um, soy sauce lying around in his pantry, I'm going to throw that in as well. How are you guys going? You falling okay, everyone? Yeah, all good. Yep, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to put like literally just a dash of soy sauce. And if you want even more color, this is the thick caramel sauce that I mentioned in my email to you guys about. And the brand that we use is called Cheong Chan usually, which yeah, which is exactly this one that Craig and Caroline have in their pantry as well. I'm liking the kitchen a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna just move in here. <laughs> okay. So again, just a very, very small amount because the flavor can be quite overwhelming. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in a minute. Okay, I'll turn it off now. And all I've done, all I've said, <laughs> is just cooked up the noodles. And with a little bit of soy and a little bit of what's called the thick caramel sauce, which is essentially like soy sauce, but with a little bit of sugar and it's caramelized, so it's quite thick and gluggy. That's the first step. How are you guys going with your badge? Yep, going good. <laughs> good, good, yeah. okay. And how are you, how's yours coming along, Tracy? I think mean, mine's okay, I haven't burned it yet. <laughs> Oh, good. That's <laughs> always a good sign. <laughs> and where did Simon disappear to? And like I said, yes. Linda, for your reference, this is what it looks like. This is about 250 grams of noodles. It's what's called fresh rice noodles. And in the States, awesome, awesome. That's looking good, Simon. Thank and you. in the States, you usually find it in the freezer section. And what I did last time I was in the States, I think I either microwaved them to soften them up or I blanched them in some hot water. 
but they you they they like in a big shape and they're sliced, so they look like strips, like white uh, white strips, and and somehow I don't know. So I always tell people you can't freeze rice noodles, but somehow in the states they manage to do it. And use I've it. seen them. I've seen them dried. Dry? Yeah. Dry yeah, version as well. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it really depends on which part of the states you're in. But over here, we're lucky enough that you know that we can buy them fresh in Ch Asian grocery stores. Okay, now we're going to get on to the uh, sauces. How's everyone? Everyone's up um, up to speed with the noodles. Have you? We've all got it done. Okay, good. Okay, I'm just gonna get this going again. I'm just heating up this pan. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in it again. Again, I'm using the carotina oil. Okay, only just a tiny amount, about one, te uh, one teaspoon, two teaspoons. Okay, and once it's heated up, I'm going to throw in a bit of minced garlic. I worry about scratching Craig and Caroline's pants because they look so new, so pristine. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy your kitchen by the end of the night. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna lightly saute the uh, minced garlic. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it sizzling from over here. And then I've got some chicken stock which I sent out, couriered out to everyone taking part earlier today. And ironically, I couriered Craig's batch over to his office, and now I'm in his home, and I walked, and I turned up at his door just as he was carrying that, 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 that parcel that he brought back from the office. So I sent all the way halfway across Sydney to his place of work today. Okay. I think what I gave you was about double the amount of uh, chicken stock that you would need. I think because I got my staff to pack everything for me, so. <laughs> but yeah, that's about double the amount. So pour in the stock. With the garlic and the oil, and we're going to throw in the seafood. Okay, we've got some scallops and some prawns over here. Am I going too fast for everyone, or you're all good? No, all good here so far. Yeah. And we've got that going. You can add in the seasoning. That's the chicken stock granules. I use chicken stock granules a lot. Okay, that's the Noor brand. The Noor brand is not gluten free, but there are gluten free versions around that you can experiment with. And I'm going to use all of it with chicken stock. And I'm going to throw in some pepper. Okay, and just let it simmer. And you really just want to get to the point where the seafood is cooked through. And to make chicken stock, I, I make my own chicken stock. It's just a matter of throwing in some chicken bones and boiling the hell out of it. Okay, there's no like celery, no other vegetables in it. It's just pure chicken bones and water. Boil for about an hour. Just enough water to cover the bones. Are there any particular bones that you use? I use the entire carcass. So, right. yeah. Um, Usually they say the marrow is where you get most of the flavor from. So if you have to, maybe like, you know, I've seen people buy a bunch of chicken legs or something like that, but I use the whole carpets really. Do you and the reason I do that is because I then like, I actually buy a whole chicken, I boil it, I take it out and use the meat for Thailandese chicken rice and then, then throw the bones back into the soup to boil it. So that's how I get like a, a limitless supply of chicken stock that I can send out to food bloggers like you guys. <laughs> Okay. The, uh, do, you, do, you clarify, do you clarify the broth at all? And take any fat out of it at all? No, I'm not that. I'm not that refined in my <laughs> in my chicken stock making. It's just a matter of boiling the hell out of a bunch of bones. But I do. I, you know, like I say, I I boil the whole chicken with the skin and all for about 20 minutes. Take it out, and then um, and then I throw the bones back in without the without the skin. So it's not really that like fatty or anything like that, essentially. Okay, so with the um, with the seafood getting cooked through, the stock simultaneously is starting to reduce, which is fine. I'm just going to reduce the heat a little bit. Um, 
Now, my staff gave you quite a bit of tapioca flour, but you really only need, I would say, about a tablespoon. Like I said, I haven't made this dish for a while now because uh, I delegate a lot. Um, so I hope I'm right. But, <laughs> but if it turns out too runny, because you want to get it like a little bit like um, thickened. And tapioca starch is what I use. But uh, Linda, if you have trouble getting hold of that, you can use cornstarch. You know, the Asians like to use tapioca starch, but we use cornstarch as well. Oh wow, that's actually I just realized. Yeah, I was wondering who that who that was. That's actually Caroline's uh, laptop. Okay, and I'm just gonna add the uh, tapioca starch. I'm basically like I don't know if you guys are up up to speed, but um, I've just put a bit of uh, about a tablespoon of tapioca flour in and mixed it with uh, some cold water and gotten a little bit of a yeah, sort of like a runny white liquid here. <coughs> I'm going to throw that into the sauce now. Okay. And that will thicken up very quickly. If you can see it. Okay. Hopefully, okay, that's right. Okay. Yeah, of course. Can you see that from uh, Caroline's screen? Okay. So you've got it quite thick. Let me just taste test it. Okay, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay, it's probably a touch thicker than I would like it, but it doesn't matter. And you know what? I forgot about the veggies. <laughs> okay, if you've still got your veggies, throw it in. And you want to soften it. And Linda, we're using a baby bok toy, which is one of the more common uh, Chinese greens available at the grocers. Very easy to get here. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, water to it because it's uh it's thickening a little bit. I would like. There you go. Okay, this is what it looks like so far, and we're nearly there. So you've got like a thick, gooey, starchy sauce, the vegetables, and the seafood. I'm just going to put it back on just to bring it back to a boil. And everyone's uh, still following me okay? I'm a couple steps behind because I had to change my gas canister. Oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm getting there. No worries. I've had a few glitches along the way, but you never would know. <laughs> Hide it well. <laughs> okay. But anyway, if uh, once you've brought it back to boil, like I said, I've got the seafood and the stock that's now thickened with the tapioca starch, and I've thrown in the veggies, and I'm going to take it off the heat. It's no longer on the stove. Take it off the heat and crack an egg into it. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to switch over to Craig's screen. Okay, I've cracked the egg into it. And I'm just stirring it around. Okay. And the heat from the sauce will cook the egg, but keep it running. Okay, so this is what the final product looks like. And these are my noodles from before, right here. And I'm going to pour the sauce over the noodles. And this is what it looks like. Yep, voila. And wow, that is that is absolutely amazing. That, and that it's very easy, really Linda. And I'm just throwing some uh, homemade fried uh, shallots over the top of it. And that's your meal right there. Does it sound like something you can attempt at home? Oh, me? Yes. That I can. I would have to use my stainless steel pots, but yes. Yeah, that's something I could, I could try. Yeah. So as you can see, if you've got chicken stock, you've got the noodles, you know, everything else, it really only is a five-minute dish. Now, a question about the, the tapioca starch, is that is that more of a Malaysian 
um, a Malaysian ingredient than, you know, like the, the French roux with flour and butter? Yeah, yeah, I would say it is. The, the Asians like to use uh, tapioca starch as opposed to, yeah, plain flour or uh, corn flour. It's just a, I guess it's just, you know, a case of uh, availability more than anything else. But corn flour really does the same thing. I think corn flour might be a little bit less uh, thick in consistency when you use it in a sauce, so you just got to adjust accordingly. Um, like I said, you know, when I found that it was picking up a bit too much, I just added a little bit more water to it sort of thing. But you essentially want something that's kind of, oopsie, that was good. <laughs> that's that's <nobody's> torture. torture. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. But essentially, you know, um, yeah, it does the same thing. And uh, I, I know uh, the purists are going to scream up, you know, jump up and down about it. But I do use chicken stock seasoning quite a bit, you know, in my food just to give it that little bit of a boost in flavor. But, you know, if you, if you don't, if you'd rather stay away from chicken seasoning, and my particular version actually has a little bit of MSG in it, and the Asians like our MSG, um, you can always just use, <laughs> you can always just put a bit of salt in it, you know. That, a lot of recipes you'll find just says, uh, you know, season, um, you know, season a curry with salt or season whatever with salt. Instead of salt or, like, um, as well as salt, I might, I might reduce the, um, the amount of salt, but just, you know, balance it out with some chicken seasoning. To me, it just gives it a more rounded flavor. So, I know yeah. My, my chicken stock tends to turn out pretty fatty. Oh, it does it? Okay. So it has lots of flavor in it. I, I don't know if, I, if, if using the chicken stock granules would be a good idea. Sure. It, I, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the fat doesn't bother me, to be quite honest. But, you know, if you want, you can just skim it off the top at the end or, like, freeze it or chill it and then just, like, scoop it out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the chicken stock granules really just give it a bit more body. I think, like, um, I mean, people like to think that in Malaysia everything is very purist and very, uh, you know, uh, very traditional. But like, I've grown up using chicken stock granules, and like, you know, all, you know, all my, you know, my colleagues and 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 and, and, and my parents and all that, we used it quite extensively, you know, growing up. So it's not as taboo over there as it might be over here, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. But yeah. there's also this opinion that, like, because, like, chicken are, like, you know, you know, sort of, like, well, you know, you get, like, they're, they're, they're mass, you know, they're farmed on mass and that sort of stuff, that there's, uh, they lose a little bit of the flavor and all that, you know, people, people talk about kampong chicken, which is, like, you know, your version of, like, free-range chicken or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. has a lot more flavor in the meat and whatever, I don't know how true that is, but, um, yeah, but, you know, in, 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 in this day and age, if you're just picking up a chicken from the from the store, the consensus seems to be that they lack flavor, therefore, you know, you need something like chicken stock granules or something to help, like, mm -hmm. bring it back, sort of thing, for what it's worth. But I do use it quite a lot in my cooking. But how did you, how did you guys go with your um, dish? Where are you at? Um, I'm done. Oh, sure. How did it turn out? Let's have a look. <laughs> hey, not bad. Have you, have you, have you taste tested it? Um, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's good, say so, if it's bad, tell me off here, all right? <laughs> How are you going, Tracy? All right, let's see. Uh, oh, cool. That's mine? <laughs> Yours is a lot lighter, I think, because of the oil you use. Mine actually has quite yeah. a, 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 an orange glow because of the oil I use. But uh, have you taste tested yours? Just about to. Okay, sure. Again, uh, speak up if it's good. Um, <laughs> and uh, Simon, how, how are you going at yours? Um, yeah. Have you tasted it? It's 19 hours. Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay. I want to no, know about I mean, it. No, I mean, no. And I don't want to know about it if it's bad. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's fine? It's okay? I was kind of like, as with Sarah and with uh, Tracy, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should give you, a, I should send you like double batches of the ingredients. Because Tracy, you said your flatmate was joining you in the kitchen. I thought, oh, well, you're going to only cook like one portion. I felt kind of bad about it. That's right. We'll fight over it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, we'll fight over it. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I've got you guys. I just thought I might mention on. It's a pity, Linda, you're all the way over there, but I was uh, trying to talk about my cooking master classes, and like for years and years, people have been on my case about like teaching them how to cook some of my dishes. So I finally am going to do something about it. So in partnership with the Grace Hotel in Sydney, uh, is a really old, majestic, historic building. And it's actually, um, uh, not coincidentally, Malaysian owned. So I'm partnering with them to run a series of five cooking masterclasses starting this Sunday at the Grace Hotel in their beautiful brasserie. And everyone walks away with a bag of goodies, everything from stress balls, and God knows I need my stress balls, and, <laughs> and um, you know, to like products from Ayam, from Caratino, the oil that I was using tonight. It's a premium uh, cooking oil, and everyone's going to walk away with that. They're going to walk away with some of my products, because um, if you know me, you'll know I produce a range of frozen meals and curry paste. So if you're interested, if you're... If you're in Sydney, or even if you're not, because the Grace Hotel is offering accommodation packages for those coming in from out of town, and you know, do join us. Check out my website, jackiem.com.au, and go to the Finders page and check out the link to the program schedule and all that sort of stuff. I will be seeing you there, Simon, this Sunday, and I hope to see you there, Sarah and Tracy, at some point. If you can't make it this Sunday, which Sarah said she can't, it'd be great for you or your kid to join us at some point, like um over the next five weeks as well. So, you know, Would love let to. me know if you're able to make it. What was Definitely that? Definitely look forward to it. I'm oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say I would love to, just can't do it this Sunday, unfortunately. Okay. Well, yeah, hit me up, seriously, because I'd really like to uh, get some of you guys in on the app sort of thing. It's just going to be a little bit of fun, you know, a little bit of a, a kind of like a just getting together with some people and like cooking up. I, I really, I mean, I, I, I've got lofty like aims for it, but I really want to create like a, an atmosphere of like being back in Malaysia at these cooking classes. And then we can all sit down for a meal at the end of it, like basically what you guys make during the class. So let me know if you'd like to join us. But um, yeah, but that is it. So uh, has everyone since tasted their uh, dish? Yes, fantastic. Very good. It looks okay. Okay, I'm glad you like it. And uh, Linda, I'll put the recipe up on the event page if you want to check it out. And just pop me a question by email. You've got my email address anytime, anyone. So uh, thanks so much for joining us. And in spite of all the hectic um, change of plans and all that, I'm glad things worked out really well. I'd just like to thank Craig and Caroline for their huge generosity in letting me use their kitchen for this event. And you're welcome to come back again if you want in the future. You got it. I'm going to move in, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get rid of me? <laughs> next, time, next time I'll cook along with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I look forward to it. Okay, great. Thanks very much, guys. I'll catch Thank you later. You. Okay, Thanks, Trace.